Hello, and I welcome you to, once again to the Duke William Online Teaching Platform. In this session, I'm looking at bond uh, valuation, and the essence of this short video is to uh, be able to use the spreadsheet functionality that the ACCA provides in uh, and helping us uh, work out these things quite uh, quickly. All right, so the question where it said a company, BV, is considering an investment in one of two corporate bonds, and the bonds do have a par value of a thousand, and then uh, pay coupon interest on an annual basis. The market price of the first bond is a thousand seventy nine point six eight trading at a premium, and its coupon rate is six percent. Uh, so six percent on every one thousand is sixty on every unit uh, of the bond. And it's due to be redeemed at par in five years' time. Um, the second bond is about to be issued and, and has a coupon rate of this time 4% and would also be redeemable at par in five years' time. And interestingly, they said both bonds do have the same gross redemption yields. That's the yield to maturity. Okay. And so it says uh, the company considers the duration of the bond to be a key factor when making decisions on which bonds. To invest in what we are required to do for the first one is to estimate the gross redemption yield of uh, the two bonds so um if it were a paper-based uh, something um we would simply have to use the irr um, and as you can see um work out this and try this at a uh, five percent um it gives us negative as you can see there four percent that gives us this, and then we use linear interpolation to work out, and that gives us a 4.2. But interestingly, with the advent of uh, a spreadsheet, um, this has become, um, will become rather um, easier to work with. So let's, let's look at this at uh, bond one. And what I'm looking out for um, is, uh, the year, so let's say, okay, I have um, the years. Um, I'm looking for that now. Interestingly, if it is a uh, manual or let's say using paper, you notice that um, I use annuities here to make life easier. So annuity factors are utilized here, but um, that will be um, quite challenging to work your way around. I need to use the IRR uh, formula. And the IRR formula in, for the spreadsheet is, is giving us equal to IRR. And then I only have to specify the range. And that range would have to be from zero to the number of years. So that is all I need to do to get the 4.2 uh, that we do have there. So let's see. Um, I have, so I need to specify from. Um, um, let me um, take this uh, from here. So I have the year um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It says, uh, oh, it says uh, 4, um, 5. So what are the cash flows? My cash flows are the annual um, um, interest. It is... Uh, 107, I can see the uh, 9.68, uh, uh, and it's 60 or 6% 6 on a 1,000. So that is 60. So, yes, yeah, 60 all the way down here. Then in the final year, 1,000 plus the 60 redeemed. Now, at this point, um, it is enough to work out the IRR uh, for this. So. I, I can uh, simply look out for um, the IRR or call it um, the gross redemption yield, okay, which, which is essentially uh, my IRR. And I'm saying that IRR will simply be very beautiful. Um, IRR, you specify, so IRR, um, you go there and you simply pick from your zero to the number base close it and you have that okay now i have this as this uh, probably because uh, 
uh, I have not specified uh, the number of decimal places I want. So I can go there and say, okay, give me two decimal places and I have the 4.2. Very, very simple. Very, very, very simple. No need to do uh, the highest rate, lower rate and all that. And all that. So then the, um, that is to do with the A, that is the IRR. And that shouldn't even take you more than a minute to do to have uh, that number of marks. Then it says we should estimate the market value of the second bond. And you see, for the second bond, uh, let me call that, uh, okay, bond uh, two. Now, um, for bond two, of course, uh, I have the year. I'm looking for the market value. So I have um, one, two, three, okay, four, five. And don't forget in bond two, it has a, a coupon of uh, 4%. So uh, literally, this should be 40. Okay, so if I have 40, I'll just drag it to this and then have uh, 1040. Now I need a discount rate uh, to do that. So my my discount rate you would uh, expect uh, will be the same uh, 4.2. But again, um, yes, I have 4.2. So let me just pick uh, this uh, 4.2 here, and that's just there. So what I have here, that is it. Now, don't forget the MPV formula. Um, if you have the MPV, your MPV um, would always be the discount rate, okay, uh, into the range. And in this case, that range will be year one to n, not from year zero. So what it means is if um, market value is equal to present value of the cash flows from year one uh, to year n, then it means that we can use the MPV function uh, to work out um, what the market value is. So a uh, very, very interesting. Um, let, let's, let's, let's look at that. So. I could find out, um, so say market uh, value. And I said that market value is essentially present value into year one to um, N. And, and, and that I'm looking at the, so yes, that market value will simply be use the MPV uh, function. So equal to, and with the MPV value, you specify the rates, as you can see there, into um, year one to this, uh, close it, and that gives me that. So, um, yeah, I don't need um, the currency there, so I don't need any symbol. Let me just take that out there. So, yes, you see, that gives me the market value of um, the um, second bond. So. That's what it is. Very, very, very simple there. So that answers for me um, those two questions on um, uh, the first two market value of the second bond. Very, very simple. But then it goes on to say estimate the Macaulay duration of uh, the second bond of the two bonds. Okay. Now, what do we do with the duration? We need to find present values, then um, weighted present values. And to do that, um, of course, uh, I could find this and say, okay, let that be equal to this. Now, if I need the weighted present values, this is what I could do. What I want to find is the discount factor. So that is one divided by one. Uh, plus uh, this value here. But what you need to understand is I want to reference this continuously from year one to five. And so to do that, that is very simple. Look at that. I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the D, which is, uh, you know, um, the cell or the column uh, reference. So a dollar sign goes there. Then in front of the fray, I put another dollar sign there. Now I'm closing it and I'm raising all to the power and um, the number of years here. 
and that gives me this so yes i can uh, draw this down and i'll have that now if i didn't put the dollar sign there um the year two will take a value from this cell year three will take a value from this cell and mess up um the whole thing but putting the dollar sign there uh, meant that i have referenced this 4.2 and and it's going to be the same 4.2 um, um as it is now if you look at um the manual workings i mean that's what you see bond one for example these are the figures we just uh, obtained there now we would have to multiply um the cash flows by the discount factors to get this then multiply this again by the number of years to get this weighted bit now we can actually skip this um when we're doing that anyway we can skip that bit there and then simply work out that um, by multiplying the 60 times the discount factor times the number of years should give us the weighted uh, bit there so let's see um so let me call this um weighted present uh, values and what are they it is equal to one uh, or the number of years multiplied by the cash flow uh, multiplied by the discount factor and that gives me this so with that i can simply draw it down and all i need is um, the sum of all of it so sum of all that gives me this bit here and i have that so this total is is what i'm looking for so i'm looking for that total divided by the market value of the bond now be careful i've already referenced this as negative so i can divide it by negative of that figure or if you just uh, permit me to find the market value again just to confirm what we have here it, it will simply be equal to i'll use mpv this time uh, referencing this uh, comma then uh, cash flows from here and that should give us the same so you you can see again that uh, we have um the same um figure um we got there so yeah i don't need any symbol there for now okay so that is it so it confirms the 107.68 uh, as it is. so what then is the duration of the bond so duration of the bond um, is simply uh, the sum of the weighted present values so which is equal to this value uh, divided by uh, that value and that should give us that so yes um, like i said i i could have formatted all this and said okay um number of decimal places two for all that and i get 4.49 uh, to be um that bit that i'm looking for very 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 simple nothing to worry about there so i i'm gonna do the same here now because uh, these discount factors are the same there is absolutely no point uh, uh you know working out the formulas again so i could just reference this and hit that and once it's equal to that i'm going to drag this down and all the figures i had there will come here okay so then again uh, this will be equal to uh, my one okay uh, multiplied by this 40 uh, multiplied by this uh, and i can have that and drag it down uh, beautifully um, um sum it up somewhere there yes so sum um, equal to the sum of all that um yes and that gives me that figure just bold it to know that is what you're looking for and and the duration um is nothing more than um that total divided by that bit there and we have interestingly 4.6 uh, whatever you want to call it whether um you know how many number of decimal places you are looking for oh, so i'm looking for two and then that's it so 4.63 and that's it so you have all that there and that answers 
the whole lot, um, nothing to worry about. So it's actually uh, easier and quicker to work out this without having to go through. And we, you're encouraged to use these functionalities in working out, um, you know, calculating your bones in MPV calculations and IRRs and uh, modified internal um, rate of return, uh, which we'll be looking at in other uh, uh, context. So essentially, that answers the question. And um, it, it brings us to 4.49, same story, 4.63 here, working it out, but that will take you much, much more time to complete and it's much, much uh, easier here. So yeah, that is what it is. Um, let's practice every exercise, uh, do every exercise using these uh, functionalities and they do work.